What does a project engineer do in construction? And what key techniques can you learn and leverage to really improve your career? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. You're gonna learn your main focus as a project engineer in construction, how to carry out that main focus, and what is one of the biggest main pitfalls you can avoid when you are a project engineer on a construction project, and the two key things that you can do to really support your career. So let's go. I love this topic. Number one, I just have to say the main focus of a project engineer is to enable the trades to do their job. Field engineers specifically figure things out and enable the craft on the project. The project engineer enables all aspects of the trades work or your self-perform work to be successful in the field. That means pay applications, that means submittals, that means RFIs, that means insurance, that even means the layout, the quality, the double checking, everything they need. Basically, the project engineer is blocking for the trades that are coming behind. We are clearing the path in tandem with the field engineers. So you're either a project engineer with a field focus or a project engineer that also does field work or you're in a company where the PE does the office work and the FE does the field work. If that's the case, just keep in mind the project engineer is enabling all aspects of that work as a scope and the field engineer is working with people in the field to make sure that the layout, the quality control, the safety, and all of the lift drawings and information is ready to go so that they can do their job because that's when we make money when the foreman and the workers are installing work. The other thing I would say is if you're a project engineer for a GC or a trade and let's just do GC first it is your job to help take care of those wonderful trade partners we have and if you're a PE as a part of the trade it is our job in both instances to take care of the craft so that is the main duty that you have is to clear the way for the people doing the work whether that's the trade or the craft for yourself perform. What does enabling and support look like? Well, let's use an example here real quick. So my craft, I'm a teacher and a business owner and a consultant. How can you support me? You can like and subscribe to this channel. So let's just practice, let's just normalize this role right now. You wanna know how to be a PE? Support the work of others. So like and subscribe to the channel and you're well on your way. Okay, but seriously, like a lot of times, and I'm not discounting this, I'm not making fun of anybody, I'm not criticizing, but a lot of times project engineers think, oh my, my job is I write RFIs, I review submittals, I do subcontractor pay applications, I get multiple quotes from vendors, I help the project manager uh, submit our owner billing, I help with scheduling, I help do meeting minutes for meetings. That's all fine and it's actually not incorrect. Like, you know, hey, good observation there. But I do wanna get a switch from the tool side of this to the process system side of it. But first I'll say, it's all about people. You're enabling people. So the end goal is your customer. So not only is the owner the customer, not only is your project manager the customer, your super and your field engineers the customers, your trades are customers, the workers are customers, the foremen are customers, and you are there to help provide customer service and a flowable environment to all of your customers. But more importantly, we don't look at things like tools. We don't, we're not professional RFI creators. We're not professional submittal reviewers. We're not professional Billers. Project engineers oversee scopes from the planning phase to the building phase to the finishing phase. So there's one thing I want you to remember. Please forever, if you've ever gotten anything out of my videos, please remember this. Plan, build, finish. So let's say it again. Plan, build, finish. What you want to do is oversee a scope. So let's just say framing and drywall or let's just say the elevators contractor with the elevator scope or the elevator install, or let's say the tile installer that's installing tile in the bathrooms and some of the other support spaces. You have to look at that trade as not only a company entity, but as a scope of work, not a company with a bunch of associated tools, but as a scope of work that you are going to plan, that you are going to help build, and that you're going to finish. And the RFIs and the submittals and the billing are all a part of that value stream. It's all a part of that flow efficiency that we're trying to create on the project side. So a project engineer, all project engineers, in whatever role you have, must stop looking at it like tools and start looking at it as a process. And so I just wanna say, when you're writing an RFI, you're clearing the way for that trade. You're helping prepare the work, right? When you're reviewing a submittal, you're clearing that, that trade to go do their work so that 
they have the right materials on time when they need them. You are enabling them through planning to do their job. From a build it right standpoint, when you go do your quality checklist, when you do your pre-construction meeting as part of the quality process, when you're actually working to resolve issues in the field with these trades and with your self-performed work, you're helping to build it right. And when you are closing out change orders, finishing negotiations, finishing out any of your billing, making sure that everything's reconciled, you're not just doing those specific tasks, you're finishing as we go. You are closing tasks out. You are helping to keep the battle rhythm of that project. So plan, build, finish all the time. Now, one thing that I think, I hope this spreads like wildfire throughout the entire world. There's this analogy of playing tennis and football. The worst thing that a project engineer can do, in addition to doing back-to-back -back meetings and being victim to email, is to play tennis instead of football. Now, let me, let me, you can substitute any kind of sports you want in here, but when you play tennis, and I actually had a guy one time, he was a project engineer, in fact. He was like, Jason, all day long, through email and phone calls and texts, I just hit that ball back in the trade partner's court. He didn't say, he was like in the subcontractor's court. Boom, you got a question, hit it right back to you. Got an RFI, hit it right back to you, right? Got a problem? You know, you submit your billing. Yeah, here's a problem with it. Hit it right back to you, right? He's like, D I play tennis. As long as I keep the balls in the other person's court, I'm good. Categorically, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You shouldn't do that ever with anything unless you're actually physically playing tennis. You should play football. When you have the ball, whether it's an RFI or a submittal or a question that needs to be answered or billing, you grab that ball and you run it to the end zone. You take it to the goal line. And if you can't finish it, you pass it successfully to someone else and support them and block for them as they're running with the ball. Do not play tennis with your trades. Do not play tennis with the owner. Do not play tennis with the architect. Don't play that stupid game. You are here to solve problems, not to waste people's time. If you get in the habit, and this is more of what not to do, of writing uh, too many emails, back-to-back -back meetings, and playing tennis with people with information and a lack of approvals, you are wasting more time. Listen to me on this. You're wasting more time than you are adding value. So you cannot do that as a project engineer. You go grab a, a, a task or a scope or a process, you go grab an RFI or submittal, and you, like my buddy Kevin says, you run it down. You like you like wrestle it down to the ground. You get it done, you focus on it, one piece flow, one process flow, and get it done, 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 freaking done, insert whatever word you want there, and just get it done. Don't be distracted doing a million things. Don't hit tennis balls back in other people's courts. Don't get distracted on your computer with email and with internet and with people interrupting you. Take the ball and run with the ball. Let me say that again. Don't get distracted. You don't see people with football being, oh, somebody on the sidelines wants to talk to me. Oh, hey, this person has another ball. Oh, over here, maybe I should switch playing football and start playing a different game. No, grab the ball, run with the ball, take the ball to the end zone, even if you have to have help doing it. That is the biggest thing that I see value add concept for project engineers. If you don't learn that, you'll end up being an assistant PM or a senior PE or a PM that's a professional email answerer, which is detrimental to your career. You'll end up doing back-to-back -back meetings, batching work, and staying uh, at work too late, too long, and ruining your personal life, and being virtually ineffective, and not being able to focus on the leadership roles you're supposed to be engaged in, which is planning, building, and finishing work as you go. So there you go, that's my passionate speech. Let me give you two more hints here. Number one, spend time in the field. You wanna be like the gazelle and not the cheetah. If you just, you're like, hey, I wanna skip the field, I don't wanna spend time with the craft, I just wanna scoot on to project manager. You will get stuck, you'll be like, like the cheetah that just ran fast for five minutes and you're now exhausted in your career. If you take the time to learn the positions and go at an even pace and get a wide range of experience, you'll end up like the gazelle and you'll end up being able to be a long distance runner. And in that situation, you'll be able to go farther, faster in your career than other people in your same conditions, same circumstances. So get the field experience. Don't just have the myopic view of trying to get promoted as fast as you can and only in the office. The other thing that I would say is master finances. Dig right in get really good at it. If you want to get promoted to PM, you've got to know the financial aspect of project management. And lastly, one bit of advice. Your job is to field the questions and enable 
the trade partners in the craft. And one of the ways that you can do that is to really field all the questions when it comes to RFIs, when it comes to detailed questions, when it comes to problem solving. We want our superintendents out in the field to be able to plan and execute work. We don't want them doing all of the answering of questions, problem solving, and writing of RFIs for the trades and for the rest of the project. They need to be planning and preparing work, making sure it's done safely, quality, and under budget, and that it's on schedule, and we really need you to support that role and really take a lot of that burden from them. So on project sites, I'll usually always default. If you got a question about the drawings or the submittals, Let's default that to the project engineer. The superintendent will be presence in the field for safety and quality and planning and executing work. And so I hope this video has been helpful. In the description below, we're gonna leave you a project engineer scorecard that you're gonna love. That's really gonna give you a well-rounded image of what a project engineer can and should do. You're gonna love it, get it, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are a project engineer or you want to be one, look out, you're gonna have a great time because if you take my advice, you're gonna learn everything you can and you're gonna get so many tools and processes and respect for people and become such a builder that you're gonna set yourself up for a great career. So let's together head on to the future. Let's go, on we go.